Now, the pumper truck has arrived on site. You can probably hear it behind me. We're waiting for the concrete truck to show up because in just a little bit, we're going to be ready to actually start pouring some concrete into our forms. But first, Roy, I wanted to uh, take a look at this bracing system. Take me through this. Well, with this bracing system, we have to put, place a cleat on the footing. Mm -hmm. And as we slide the piece of C-channel over top the cleat, we line it up to our stud or webs. Right. Okay. Then we place a screw at the very top, right into the block. And we put place the screw in every every single block. And we do this every six feet. Give us a scaffold plank to walk on and so forth. Now you were telling me that as the pour actually begins, as we put concrete down into these hollow forms, the wall is actually leaning in just a little bit, is that leaning right? Leaning slightly. So it's easier to push a wall out than pull a wall in with the uh, bracing system. So I'll exaggerate it, but with the wall leaning back like that, you fill it with concrete. Yes. And, and then after the, before the concrete sets, obviously, you'll straighten it back up? Straighten it back up. OK. Bring it up to level. Great. Now we're putting up our scaffold. Our yeah, that's, scaffold a, that's the thing I noticed about your system that's so so cool, too, is that you've got automatically, you're building the scaffold so that you can build your walls higher. Exactly. These are where your planks will go so you walk on them. It's one complete system. Okay, Roy, and then the uh, scaffold plank just goes up there. Again, that gives us a working surface to stand on as we continue on up the wall, building the wall up to the height, right? Exactly. But that's the basics of our bracing system. Exactly. And in fact, we're going to get to the actual pouring now that another section of the house is ready for the concrete. So let's go over to Robin at the pumping truck. We're now ready to pour concrete into our forms. The concrete truck isn't here yet, but we do have our Schwing concrete truck. I'm here with Ted Nettles, who can tell us a little bit more about how this machine works. It, the concrete comes in and then is poured through this hopper. What happens from there? Concrete will come in on the ready mix truck. It'll be discharged into our pump hopper. Uh -huh. And then it goes through the pump, comes out the discharge lines, through the pipe, through the boom, and what we do when we're pouring these ICF houses is we'll put a fitting on the boom to slow the flow of the concrete down so that we can pinpoint it in the walls where we want it without a lot of force and so you don't move the walls and everything like that. The whole process starts with this concrete truck. The concrete rolls from that truck into the hopper and then is sent into the pipes, up through the boom and into the walls. Now what we're looking for are five or six cubic yards. And a yard is about three feet by three feet by three feet. In this concrete truck, we have about seven or eight cubic yards. So we have more than enough. But say we ran out. Say we didn't have enough uh, concrete in the truck. What we would do is send the boom up over the hopper and we would circulate the concrete until the next batch of concrete arrived and then we could continue pouring. We don't want to clog up any of the booms. Anyway, what's happening right now, we don't have to worry about any lack of concrete. It's sent right through here, the hopper, up through the boom and over to Harvey. Robin, this is a job, boy. If you love toys, we've got them all out here today. We've got the right pieces of equipment to get the concrete over to where we are and we're just about to continue our pouring here. Now our pour is moved over around to this section of the wall, and we're controlling the amount of the pour, the flow rate in here, because as Roy said, a four-inch cavity, that's how much, that's the width between the styrofoam panels, a four-inch cavity fills up pretty rapidly. Now what we're doing is, as we work around the wall, pouring this material in here, and we're tapping down below, several of the guys are beating on the walls down there, basically, using the sound as an indicator that it's full. Obviously, we've got to have a full wall. Now, I'm trying to keep ahead of the boom here as well. This is a crucial operation of communication between Roy here and Dan back at the truck, because Dan is really the one controlling where this boom goes, where the pipe is spitting the concrete into here. And he's feathering it very carefully because obviously he doesn't want to knock either one of us off of the scaffolding here. Roy, is it filling up all right? It's coming along. Okay. It's looking good. A little bit of splatter. I don't want to distract you. I know you're uh, I'm doing busy at the moment. Now, 
concrete comes in various strengths. And what we're pouring here in these walls is 3,000 PSI, that's pounds per square inch. That means it's a, it's a test of the strength of the concrete. It'll hit, take 3,000 pounds per square inch before it crushes or breaks apart. And as it cures up in the walls here, it'll actually increase somewhat in that strength. Hey, Roy, about how long for this to initially set up? This is pea gravel. It should set up approximately 30, 30 minutes to an hour on a temperature like today. All right? And then in about 24 hours, it should be probably about 700 to 1,000. PSI, probably right. 700, and it'll, as it continues to cure, it'll increase in strength until it gets to its rated strength and maybe even a little beyond. It's going to go beyond, if we're pouring 3,000, we should be around, at, after nine months, about 5,500. Is that right? Yes. That's quite a bit beyond your rating. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. All right, well, I'll let you keep working here because obviously we've got time constraints about keeping moving around the perimeter of the building and keeping the concrete flowing.